What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Texas Redfish Hunter TV. Today we're going to be wade fishing. Actually, tomorrow morning we're going to be wade fishing. I just finished live streaming for two hours. By the end of that live stream, I was uh, pretty delirious to say the least. Talking for two hours straight and looking at a computer screen for two hours straight, not that easy, but I do it for you guys, answer a lot of questions. So if you haven't seen the live streams, go ahead and check those out. I usually do them, I try to do them pretty frequently, but they're a lot of fun. So for all you guys that stopped by them, thank you guys for stopping by. But now it's time to finish getting ready, all the gear ready, for our wade fishing trip tomorrow. So I'm going to go through kind of the gear that we're going to be using. And then I guess the point of this is we're actually going to be doing more exploring tomorrow. I'm going to be fishing places we've never fished before. So Cora and I are going to be going out in the morning, early morning, doing some exploring, trying to find some new areas, and trying to catch a couple fish. Can't promise we're going to catch a bunch of fish tomorrow, but I'm going to kind of show you how I break down trying to find decent spots, especially for wade fishing. So it should be a lot of fun. But first, let's kind of give a rundown of the, the gear that I'm bringing for wade fishing real quick. All right, so let's do a quick gear rundown for the morning. The Concept A is on a seven foot two custom red tie rod. That's Cora's custom. That's what she's going to be throwing. Eight ounce Rockport rod, a jig head, loop knot, 25 pound fluoro, 30 pound braid on the Concept A. It's a pretty basic swim bait setup. I've got the exact same setup on my Luz Tournament Pro G and a six foot six medium light red tie rod, which I really like for weight fishing. The last rod setup is going to be the seven foot medium red tail rod, Concept TX, and a hunchback. I love throwing the hunchback when wade fishing. This is a pink hunchback. Um, it's like a topwater lure. It's a wake bait. It runs just under the surface, and a lot of fish like exploding on that. And then we're just going to be throwing a pack of down souths and some extra jig heads just in case we break off. The wade belt that we're going to be using is the Wade Right Wade Belt uh, from Coastal Fishing Gear. So like I said, less is more. That's the tackle breakdown. That's all we're bringing. Tomorrow's all about exploring. We don't want to be lag lugging a bunch of gear from spot to spot because we're going to be exploring a couple different spots. Hopefully we can find some fish. But I think the point of this video is going to be more kind of showing you guys what we do to explore new waters and how we attack new waters that we've never fished before. Because I think the best way to become a better fisherman is fishing spots you've never fished before and ways you've never fished before. So this video is going to be more about how we game plan for water we've never fished, how we explore for new spots, and hopefully you guys can go out there and do the same thing. Because when you go out more and you start doing more things, you build more confidence on the water and that in turn makes you a better fisherman. So that's our goal for this video, that's our goal for tomorrow. We're gonna wake up early, we're gonna go exploring, we're gonna bounce from spot to spot using as little gear as we possibly can and uh, see how it goes. So, I'll see you guys in the morning. It's a little bit windy today, but we'll manage. It's a good wind direction for this shoreline, I would say. Basically, we did a lot of driving around this morning. What do you think, Cora? Yeah. She's she said too much driving around. Uh, first spot I wanted to go to had private property signs, so that's never a good thing. But that's, I guess, the point of exploring. You get out there, you figure out what you can and can't fish, and it takes a little bit of driving around. So this spot looks pretty darn good. It is a flat. I found it on the hook and line map that I've been talking about lately. Uh, there's a pretty good flat here. I looked at depth, and I looked at... Uh, basically what the ground would be like. It should be hard packed sand with grass. That's what I'm hoping for. But uh, I guess we'll find out once we get out there. But just based on first impressions and driving by, it looks fantastic. And like I said, never fished here before. So let's go see what happens. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go. Let's hit it. So guys, if you look at all this trash all over the place, I mean, look at all this. That right there is the reason why a lot of these launch spots get closed because people are super trashy and don't pick up their stuff. So next time we come back here, we're gonna come back with a trash bag to try to clean some of this up because so much stuff is becoming private and unfishable and we need to prevent that from happening. So if you guys go and launch at a place, uh, don't leave your trash there. And if you do see trash, try to pick it up, try to help out the waterways. Let's try to keep as much of this public as possible. There's a lot of bait. You kind of half expect a redfish to just kind of be tailing right here. 
All right, so guys, so first impressions, a lot of bait. I like the grass, the depth looks pretty good. We'll see what the guts look like out here. Looks like a pretty good flat, mixed grass, mud, maybe even some shell. So I'm liking the way it looks so far. First impressions are good. Uh, my first thing we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for a little bit of a depth change. We're gonna be looking for something like waist deep water next to like knee deep water. So some little drop off cut that holds a little bit more current. That's gonna be the next thing we look for when we're out here looking for fish. I'm gonna try that hunchback for a while. I kinda wanna start on the shoreline, I think. There's some crab traps here, which makes me think there's a little bit of good depth around the area. So I'm thinking that's probably gonna be a good place to start. And then keep looking towards the shoreline, seeing if we see any redfish. So yeah, another good sign, I'm actually throwing this hunchback now, but another good sign is actually crab pots. Those crabbers know where some good spots are for crab to sit, and usually that's where some predator fish will sit as well. So I like seeing crab pots, and I like working the areas that crab pots are laid down in to try to find some of those predator fish. Fish on. Oh. Oh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Click it, click it. Real. Dinker? Hey, we'll take a dinker. Oh yeah, ultra dink. They are here. There you go. Up. Oh, well, he just hit my leg too. Well, they're here. There's a shell like that way and then grass. And I cast it right in the middle of that. Well, that's a pretty good tip right there. So. Good job, babe. Let me know. So there you go. She found a transition zone between shell and grass and that fish was sitting right on it. Awesome. Now I'm gonna cast here. No, I'm okay. I'm not gonna steal your spot. I'm gonna move a little bit farther. Oh, I just got smoked right there. Might have been onto some. Oh, he got my tail. Cora may have stumbled it on a little something, something right here. Are you off? Are you kidding me? Hey, they're here. The very small ones. They are here. Already, we're already uh, counting. You know how many casts I made right here, too? Did you cast back to the crab? What are they called? Crab pot. Yeah. I did not. I did not. Right we know who the real fisher woman is. Why do I even have the channel control? Why don't you just do the whole channel? As soon as it hit the water, he just took off with it. Yes! <laughs> Dang it. Little buggers. I have felt a couple casts in a row, a big pile of grass right in front of me. And that's a good spot for fish to ambush, so I'm gonna work this little grass pocket a little bit harder. Thick and deep grass right out here. 
Got him. Redfish. It's a pretty red. Pretty, pretty little red. Let me put this guy in my wade right hole right here. And we're ready to go. God, that was a pretty fish. I have no idea. I have no idea if that release got anything at all. I was trying to clean him off because he had a little blood coming out of his mouth from the hook. And he got off. <laughs> but a redfish, nice. It's like Dink Fest out here. Dink City. But it's still fun. So ju basically just like just like Cora found that little transition between shell and grass and caught a fish, I found this pocket of thick grass that I decided to exploit and obviously it is a great ambush point for fish. That's not the biggest fish in the world, but it does show you that it is holding fish. So that's just my lure, my rod, my sensitive rod with a braid that helps me distinguish what I'm fishing through and helps me con find contact points where I can find more fish, even in a spot I've never been. I like to fill in that grass. I knew that grass would hold fish and it definitely was. Oh, your t they got your tail. <laughs> Okay. Really? Uh -huh. Hero 5 died on my action hat, so we're back to the chesty. The good old chesty view. We need to find better depth. This isn't deep enough. Oh, right as I say that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, good fish. Right as I say that too. What the heck is this? I think it might be a giant flounder. What is this? Oh, it's a stingray. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Stay away from me. You didn't bring any things that cut it, did you? Nope. <laughs> it's a big old stingray. Okay, this is why you shuffle your feet when you're wade fishing. Now what? Okay, well, I'm thinking I don't have any good way of landing him safely without threatening of getting stabbed. So I'm gonna have to cut the line with my teeth. This is not smart. All right, I don't like anything about this. Got it. Oh. <laughs> oh okay, well, that was scary. I apologize, I had no good way of getting that thing right off, but. Did what we could here. I've seen, there's been so many birds diving like on that one spot. All I'm saying is I've seen like bait kind of popping and that bird and birds occasionally. There he is. Yep. There we go. Another dinker but I just had that feeling. This is probably what's been stealing our tails all morning. All morning. This little dinker, dinker, dinker trout. <laughs> See you, buddy. Woohoo! <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, a little guy, to say the least. But anyways, guys, so that fish, we kind of saw a bird working, saw some bait popping in this little, it's kind of like a mud pit. So this is a new kind of area on this same flat. It's muddy grass. And that little transition zone, watching a bird kind of hit bait, that's kind of what drew us to this area. Found out it was a different bottom, and there it is, another fish. So it seems like the fish aren't relating to any one thing in particular. They're kind of just 
all over the place. Hard to pattern that way. And it seems like there's a lot of small fish. Oh! Yeah, I just got smoked again. He pantsed me. He pantsed me. At least that's better than getting the tail stolen. Did you have fun today? Yeah. It was a good day on the water. It was good. We were exploring, which is always fun. We found a dinker spot on a small fish here, but you know, I think it's going to hold a good fish at, when the conditions are right. We had an incoming tide today pretty hard. Uh, 10 to 15 mile per hour, probably 10 mile per hour winds out of the southeast. So I think under the right conditions, which I would think today would have been a good condition with an incoming tide and a, and a southeast wind, this would have been a good spot. But we found some small fish, but I kind of, I guess the point of this video really was to show you guys how we approach a new spot. And we, you know, figure out stuff on the water, like where the grass lines are, where there's shell, where there's mud, you know, where the water depth is. Now we know a lot more about this spot and we can more effectively cover water here. And, you know, the smaller ones were in here, but that means that the bigger ones will probably show up. And at the right time of year, maybe they're going to be here. So this is definitely one to keep in the memory bank. Uh, and now, you know, being on a flat, I think the biggest thing is you have to be able to cover a lot of water, especially if there's not a lot of different contour changes, if there's not a lot of depth changes or grass lines or shell lines. You got to be able to cover a lot of water because those fish are just cruising the flat, uh, usually not schooled up. So you might get a bite every now and then. And we got a lot of bites, but they were a lot of small bites. They were ripping the tail off of everything. So. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. We enjoyed fishing out here. We always like exploring new areas. We might go drive by a couple other areas as well and uh, see if there's some good wade launch points around here. All of that stuff we get from the hook and line map and Google Earth or the maps on our phone. That's kind of what we use or what I use to go find spots. Cora just kind of comes Girls. along for the ride and <laughs> fishes. But uh Dink Trout, Dink Red, what can you do? Hopefully you guys still enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. It's going to be on Cora's face or <laughs> somewhere in that general vicinity. And then also, how about you check out this other wade fishing video that I think you guys will enjoy because we did catch some monster trout in it. So I think you guys will enjoy it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. This is a cool outro. Oh, that was dumb. <laughs>